Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, do an outline. And I'm going to use a Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a medium. I mean, to me, this is this is medium uh, size brush, and I want to uh, use a color that is going to be friendly to uh, the purple. So I'm going to take a little bit of what is the purple in in my set. And I'm going to put a little bit of brown. Brown. So this is kind of the color that I'm going to be starting with. So it's kind of like a brownish, reddish gray. And I really want to water that down so that I don't have any marks. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the head. And again, it's a little bit wider at the bottom. And remember, we just talked about that slight angle. And what I do is, after I do that, I feel this color is a little bit dark. I'm just taking some water and I'm just kind of just fluffing it out so I don't get like a line I can't get rid of if I need to change it. Okay, so next I'm going to do the body. It's almost like a heart shape, you know, that kind of just goes slightly to the right. And it starts higher on the right. And I'm going to put in, just kind of separate it, put in the wings. Okay. So over here, where we have that kind of that heart that points, we've got the the feet and just look out for those little angles. And then you go up and you can see that the other foot is higher. Okay. And then we have the, what I call ears. I don't know if they're actually called ears or not. If you look at this line over here, okay. So now we have everything that we're going to be working with. So what I felt was a good idea to do was to put in the eyes because that yellow is going to be tricky to do if we have a wet surface. So I'm going to take a thinner brush and I'm gonna create just, I'm gonna use a thicker brush just, just to collect the color. I'm putting a bright yellow. I'm putting some of this, which is a mustard yellow. I'm putting in some of this terracotta color. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that color to draw out the eyes. So I'm going to start with the one that is uh, a whole circle that we're seeing. And it's almost kind of in the middle. And kind of, if we are to draw a line in the middle, it actually is kind of in the middle of that. I'm going to put that here. And then I am going to do the other side that I'm just seeing a little bit of. 
I'm going to take some of the rust color. I'm just going to drop it in where I'm seeing it the most. And notice because of the tilt, the right eye is a little bit higher. I'm going to go back, take some of that stronger yellow, drop it in. And it's okay if your yellow ring is bigger than the area that you want, because we're going to use some dark colors and that should um, cover it. So since I have this yellow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just tackle the white areas that do have a hint of yellow. So I'm just putting some water just in that kind of triangular area that is white. And I'm just going to take some of the yellow and that rust and just drop them in. If it's too much color, just water it down just so that the area is not completely white. And I'm also going to slightly wet the area around the eye. I'm just going to drop in some of that rusty orange color. Okay, so it's always a good idea to use colors um, to use colors um, that you mix and try to see where else you can have them. Um, first of all, the color doesn't dry. Uh, it, it'll be wet, it'll be ready for you to use. Uh, and also it, it creates um, a cohesive painting because most likely if you do have a color, you're gonna have it somewhere else. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to tackle the, everybody's, okay, more people joining. Uh, so if you're just joining, what we did is we just did the outline of the owl. Just please notice the, um, the angle, it just sits slightly at an angle and almost like a heart shape that kind of veers towards the right. So if you're just joining, I know several of you joined kind of later, a little bit later, so you're fine. We still have not um, done the big stuff. And then we did the rings of the eye with the yellow to get that kind of out of the way. And we're gonna now go on to our purples. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna play around with the purples a little bit. So, you know, depending on what you have, you're gonna get different shades. So I do have, this is kind of what is really closest to purple in my palette, but it has a lot of pink in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take some blue and mix it. So I'm getting more of, you know, like a deep violet color. Also, there's this brighter blue that I can use and I'm gonna get a slightly different shade. So I'm probably gonna be using all of them. So what I'm going to do is I am going to slightly wet the areas that are going to be purple. Now they might be still a little bit damp from my start, but I'm going to go ahead. Now just be careful because you do wanna leave some of the areas white. They're not you know, pure white, but you kind of wanna leave them. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna work on this in section. So I'm just doing the, the forehead. And notice when you're doing that peak, it's going to be, you know, also with the angle of, you know, the three quarters, it's almost like he has his head just slightly to the side. So I wet that and I'm going to drop in. And what I'm doing is because this is feathers, I'm kind of just doing a feathered motion. I mean, because why not? We're doing feathers, so. Now you don't have to be using the same purple all throughout. I'm just trying to establish the colors. So I felt on this project just uh, to be able to uh, maintain the shape, it kind of, it works better to wet each section at a time. And what I'm going to do over here is 
uh, because you can see kind of the white feathers going in. I'm just going to kind of extend the purple a little bit. So I'm carving out the purple areas. Okay, so now I'm going to go a little bit deeper and more reddish. Some areas. Maybe I'll use a smaller brush. And again, I kind of want to feather it. I feathered mine kind of more than um, what we see in the painting. I'm going to take a little bit kind of of the blue. So what I'm doing is I'm doing cool and warm purples, which means, you know, more bluish purples and then some that are more pink. Wherever you see it darker, just go slightly stronger with color. And that's gonna help create some depth. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use some of my opera pink, which is that very bright pink. And I'm just going to drop it in. I see some of it over here, a little bit of it over here. And also, you know, I'm kind of leaning more towards, a, you know, pinkish purple. So I'm just adding it in. Okay, so next we're going to move around um, the left side. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just slightly wet the areas. I'm starting with the side of the face. So it starts with kind of a dark rim. So I'm using that purplish color along with the blue. But on this one, I'm going to add, you can add brown or Payne's gray if you want to just get it deeper. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dot this. Let it kind of just, play around a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back with my softer purples around. So I'm going to take a very thin brush, I'm getting the water off of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread these out just a little bit. And you can spread them out in both directions. A little bit of pink over here. Go back and drop in some more dark. So I'm gonna do the, um, the other side and always try to start with start a little bit higher than where you want it to be or where you're starting. I'm just gonna take a little bit of water. Don't, don't let it get too wet because we still wanna be able to control the shapes. And again, I'm doing that dark rim. Need it to be a little bit darker. I want it to be like a really deep dark purple. So whatever you need to combine to do that. And again, just make sure that you're still maintaining that tilt of the head. And then when I get here, I'm just going to feather in a 
we got our covers. And while I'm at it, I can just go and mark out some of the other feathers in there. And this is giving the eyes plenty of time to kind of dry before we tackle them because like I started saying, we just want to be careful with that yellow so that it does stay yellow and we can even brighten it a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to work on the wings a little bit. Again, I'm going to slightly dampen those wings. We're seeing just kind of a little bit more brightness there. Kind of more blue. the deeper color and again you know you can feather out the colors if the brush you're using is too thick just take a thinner brush and if the color's too heavy just take the brush and move it Kind of like this little shot of blue over here. I'm going to go to the other side, the other wing. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to have the deeper purple, especially at the tips. So again, I'm going to build your purple, make it dark. And at the very tips, I'm just going to add a little bit of Payne's gray, or you could even add um, some dark brown. Since I have all this darkness, which I have a little bit too much of, I'm going to sneak some of it up in here. Some of it over here. Feathering it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to move down to the feet. And uh, I'm going to start with this foot over here because that's kind of what's going to balance the whole composition. So I still have that purple, that deep purple, and I'm just going to see, I'm looking at this space over here, and that's going to determine the angle of each foot. And then I'm going to take a little bit of brown. Brown mixed in with the purple. And see, I'm trying to break up this line so it's not too restrictive and solid. So you can already see that we're starting to see the balance. So I'm doing this toe first. So it does have a purplish brownish color. And then the other one. This one seems to have a touch of yellow on it. And just with a deep color, I'm just going to just put in the claw lightly just so that I remember that they're there. It's this color too. In that area. So now I'm going to go to the other foot, which notice again, it drops lower. And 
And I'm using brown with a little bit of purple. Those have some yellow, oranges, pinks, but very light. So I'm just going to put them in. And just pull those colors up. And again, I'm going to use a very deep color to just mark the claws. That's kind of what's giving that stability. Okay, so by now, the, okay, the eyes are dry. We are going to um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the outer line, which is the very dark, uh, dark rim. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take brown and the dark blue. I'm going to really dark color. And the reason I'm doing that and not using black is that I'm going to leave the black, the little bit of black that I'm going to use till the very, very end so that it really sharpens it. And what I'm going to do, and notice that, you know, they're not like 100% round. I mean, they, they have a little wiggle to them. So don't worry if your line is not completely sharp. And then I'm going to put the inside line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark any light spot. Like I have a big light spot here. And I'm just outlining it so I don't, you know, forget and go over it. So we're going to move on to the next eye. And um, what I'm going to do, this, this kind of helps moving from one area to the other. I'm going to put a little bit of the color that's around here, kind of dotting it. And I'm slightly moving until I feel that I hit where it's starting. There's kind of a peak here with the feathers. And then we get into the eye. So now this one is going to be a little bit different where we're not seeing um, the whole eye. So just start with whatever looks clear to you. And it sits higher because of the angle of the head. And the line is thinner because we're not seeing it straight on. To the inside line. And I'm going to outline that light spot. So when you're doing the eyes, I mean, to me, mine look a little wonky right now. So what I'm going to do, and again, that's another reason not to use black right away because it will be hard to, to fix is as I start detailing, I'm just going to check, you know, their angles. I'm going to check the relationship of size between the two. And I'm going to work on getting all of that a little bit more proportional. Okay, so I'm going to put in some of the detail that's leading out. Same thing with this side. So again, by doing this, I'm going to go and revisit the areas that I worked on. You can already see that this could go lower. I 
Okay, next we're gonna put in the beak. So the beak is going to sit in between the two eyes and you really wanna look at the reference of the photo and just see exactly where it's sitting. In between them. And it goes almost to the chin line. And again, I'm not going terribly dark because I might have to move something. And then I'm going to feather around it. I'm using a little bit of that dark brown and, um, and blue color, and also some of the purples. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna work on the inside of the eyes. And if you look closely, we're seeing a lot of blue, we're seeing purple, and then we're seeing what is almost the black. So I'm gonna start with the blue. And you know, this is kind of fun to exaggerate that if you want to make it a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna put the blue here where I'm seeing it. Seeing it over here. And then underneath it, I'm seeing the purple. You know, and again, you can go darker afterwards, but it's hard to go lighter. No, let that just dry just a little bit. Now, there's some kind of fun splotches of green on him. So I'm going to take kind of this more olive green that I have. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this yellow. And again, you don't want it to be too strong. It's just complementing those purples. So it's kind of fun to use it. Yeah, a little bit more yellow. Just to make it a little bit brighter. And again, not too much. We see some of it in the cheek. We see some of it up here. Again, feel free to add water to it so it's not too thick. And we see some of it over here. Anywhere else you see it, and actually there's some, there's very little bit up here. I'm not seeing any place. Maybe even a little bit in here. Okay. So at this point, we have everything um, painted in. So now it's going to be tweaking, fine tuning. So I would say at this point, we would move to uh, you know, a script brush or a really thin brush. And I'm going to <clears throat> go to the eyes. Remember, we let them kind of dry a little bit just so that we don't get any colors. I'm gonna use a Payne's gray, or you can use, you know, a black if you want. And I'm going to put in the darker areas. like the pupil in here. And again, just, you know, be mindful if the color gets lighter, gets darker, make sure that you adjust the amount of water. And again, the very thin brushes don't hold a lot of water. So you're gonna be kind of going back and forth 
picking up the water. So I'm gonna go to the black. Now that I have a little bit more accuracy and I know that most likely I'm not going to be moving things around. And you know, black is one color you don't wanna use in a wet area because it will bleed everywhere and it will turn your colors gray. And I'm gonna very carefully just pull some of the lines. Hey Noelle, can I ask a question? Yes. So I'm way behind on the eyes. Did you do the whole, it looks like you've put black over a good part of the pupil. Like the, like the little black dot in, in your eye, right? That's black. But the rest of it, it looks, Actually, like, it looks way darker than mine. Um, well, I'm gonna do the same process with the other eye. So maybe that will help. Okay. So, yeah, I'll 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 go to that one in in a minute. So okay. basically, I started with the gray or a deep brown and blue, and then I'm fine tuning with um with the black. Okay, sorry to interrupt. No, not at all. So again, I'm taking some of this black and I'm feathering it out. Just make sure you have a really thin brush to do that because you want this to just barely be there. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, go to the other eye. But what I wanna do when this dries is I want to just kind of fine tune the color, get a little bit more orange around the rim. So let's go to this eye. We're gonna do the same thing, except that the shape is different, but I started, I put the blue and I put the purple, and now I'm going to go with the Payne's gray or a very deep color, not black quite yet. And I'm gonna fill in the darkest areas. So it looks like it's black when it's wet, but it's really not as deep, so. I think it's a safer color to start with. Again, using Payne's gray. I'm gonna take just a little bit of blue. Shaping. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the black. Again, very thin brush, very carefully. And now, once you put it against the Payne's gray, you, you'll be able to see the difference that it is so much deeper, flat. And I'm just going to feather out some of the areas. Okay, let it dry just a little bit more. I'm gonna to move to the beak. Again, I'm using the Payne's Gray. If you don't have Payne's Gray, dark blue, dark brown, should give you a nice deep color to work with. 
And I'm gonna use black just for the tip, just to give it that sharpness. And since I do have the black, I'm gonna to go to cross. And I did have the dark color to start with. So I'm not, I'm not hiding it. I'm just, I'm just creating another dimension with the color, with the deep. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I want to give the, the wings just a little bit more detail. So I'm going to create a deep, deep purple. Touch of Payne's gray to get it really, really deep. And again, I'm going back to my very thin brush. And I'm just, see, I already have color in there. So when I'm putting in new streaks of color, it's not outlining it or, or anything. It's actually giving like a feather texture. I'm going to water it down a little bit and just. So in here, we're seeing just a lighter version of that. So water down that purple. And very light, almost like, like hairlines. Go here. And what I'm doing is I am sharpening the areas that need to be darker. And because this brush is so thin, it doesn't hold a lot of paint. You want to make sure that you constantly go back and pick up paint because you don't want to have like any marks. So when your brush is dry, it's going to leave kind of unwanted marks. I'm going to detail the legs a little bit more. Just using some of the brown and the purple. A little bit of the gray. And every time I'm going in an area, I'm just kind of adding some, some feathering. Okay. 
in the feet, you know, so this, like this toe that's facing, it has a little bit of a foreshortening. So just, you know, that comes with practice, just getting those, those angles, right? Okay. And we have some in here. I think this, this area right here just needs a little bit more. Yeah, it's looking too empty. And maybe a little bit over here. So I'm going to go into the eyes and I'm going to just kind of break down the color a little bit more. So towards the edge, we're seeing more of this kind of almost an orange color. And same thing on the other side. Wherever you're seeing that color, you can add it. I'm gonna work on a little bit of um, detail in the front of the face. Now, I'm going to just take a very watered down, almost whatever looks grayish to you out of your colors. And I'm just going to kind of put a little bit in here because the white was just a little too white. I'm going to just drop in some of the purple around, some of the blue. A little bit much, but it's a bigger brush. And you can do any order that you want with the colors in the background. Okay, so again, I'm going back to my, my very skinny brush. And in purple with James Gray. And I'm just going to just bring up some of the detail that's in the feathers. They kind of, you know, are framing that area. I wouldn't go with black. I think it'll be a little too sharp. Anywhere else you feel that and some of them you see more pronounced than others, almost like more of an outline to them almost.
And there he is. So I would say that um, if we had more time or if you're going to work on this some more, what I would do is I would just give a little bit more attention to any edges that you're seeing, like the tips over here. Um, maybe just go one more time and just revise the eyes. This area over here with just going in, you can see there's little almost like teeny little thin triangles of deep color and that will help bring out the feathers. So um, um, so that's kind of what I would do. And maybe just a little bit more, you know, breaking down the color in here, just some faint feathering and I think he's uh, he's good again if you want to um, you know do any line work you can do that Sorry, my phone's acting a wonky. So you can do that once once it's dry, but otherwise be as cute as is. Okay. You can unmute. You can unmute yourself. Okay. Any questions, observations? Um, yeah. You show me Susanna. Can I see? Oh, cute. Yes, looks good. It's to dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sharon? Well, mine needs a lot of work. It looks good, though. Looks good. Remember, I, I made three of them already. So, yeah. So, I've made practice. Yeah. Phyllis? You have to unmute. Good. Looks good. Lisa, you yeah. like yeah, you're not too happy this time. Oh, <laughs> it looks like a monster. <laughs> it looks like these eyes are like a horror. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is. I mean, he, mine looks like a gremlin, so you know he is kind of a little, a little, you know, little naughty that way. Carol. Hmm. Not too sure. Oh, it's good. No, it's a great start, Marlene. Like no. <laughs> no. Un unmute yourself. Uh, I didn't do it. I got in too late. I was having such trouble. I don't know what's wrong that it will not accept my password now. Well, sometimes, you know, if you're just off by a letter, it, it, oh, no, I did it five or six times and, and it wouldn't let me in. So. Well, Any? luckily for you, you know, the teacher, she can help you out later. Yeah. Yeah. I'll <laughs> do it. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do it. Okay. All right. Lu uh, Lucia. Yes. Oh, looks like a baby owl. Kina, do you want to show me or show me later? Well, it's a little angry. <laughs> oh, he's cute. He's he's related to Lisa's. <laughs> <laughs> a lady yeah, in my it's hard, gym it's hard class. to make an owl. It's kind of hard to make an owl not look angry. I mean, I think all of mine look slightly angry. So um that's okay. I think it was uh it was it was fun. Um I think the eyes are kind of 
critical, just the getting the distance between them. Um, that might be, because if they're slightly too close together, they could get that angry look. And also if the top, you know, just, it's very easy for that to happen. So, you know, that's just something to watch out for. So those of you that joined us kind of a little bit later today, what I was saying is that we're going to take just do more sessions with each medium just so that it, we can really explore it. So we're gonna start um, doing that with our next one and that's going to be ink pen. Uh, so it's gonna be three sessions in a row instead of two. So next week it's ink pen and we'll do three different things. It's not gonna be the same uh, subject all throughout. So um, let me know if you have any questions later or, um, Want to show me your work? I would love to see it. I have a question. Um, I have a question. Yes. About yes. Can you send us, um, you know, your suggestion for tie? I mean, I just got sharpies. I've got like regular sharpies, and I'm not sure of the exact kind of paper you suggest to use for that. Okay, I think there's a list that I put together before you joined us. I'll I'll resend it to okay. you or something. Thank you. But. Um, but so, so just, I mean, just in general, so the, uh, the ink pens, honestly, I find that just these, these Sharpies, this one says Sharpie pen fine. They work great because, I mean, there's so many other ones that you can get from Texas Art Supply, but you know, you're going to go through them and these are just, you can buy like a whole packet, you know, office max or something paper literally you can use any kind of paper that you want um i some i rotate i go between like one that's rough but bristol is very smooth so that's kind of it's a no hassle kind of paper lisa i will send it to you but really any even just regular copy paper will be fine okay all right it's really the watercolor paper is the one you have to be you anything but watercolor paper so that's it okay everyone well have a great day great rest of your day and let me know if you have any questions and i will see you next week